Hello and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast, 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news first thing in the morning. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by team reporter Lindsay Polares and a special guest on today's episode, Tracy Sandler from Fangirl Sports Network. Tracy, thank you so much for joining. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm very excited. Awesome. So Tracy, what are your first impressions of this Minnesota Vikings team? Well, it's a Minnesota Vikings team without Justin Jefferson, which makes it like almost an entirely different Minnesota Vikings team. But the thing that there are a couple things that jump out to me right away. First of all, the turnovers, of course, they have 13 turnovers, only four of which are interceptions, which I actually think is, is a very interesting stat because that means they are losing their fumbles. And that is something I think the four narrows can really capitalize on. Then the other thing that kind of stands out to me is that without Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins is really reliant on TJ Hawkinson. The 49ers have been really good against tight ends this year. So those are the two things like right off the bat that kind of jump out. Lindsay, Thursday was the team's first practice back. What was the energy level like and how is the team bouncing back from that week six loss? Yeah, it actually feels like an extended period of time that there hasn't been any media availability or open locker room. Um, And I think that that has given the 49ers just because of the Monday night football schedule, some extra time to process, do their team meetings, physically just recover from the loss in the Browns in a different time zone. Um, And then they're back in the building and ready to get to work. Uh, We heard from defensive lineman Nick Bosa say that, yes, the loss obviously is a little bit of an emotional letdown, but the energy is up and now it's just about getting back to the grind and that there are formative losses. This is one of them and they're ready to push through it and continue forward because the bigger picture goal is still very much in mind. Definitely. And Tracy, you talked about the Vikings offense. Let's talk a little defense. Mm -hmm. Um, The Vikings are known for their high blitz rate on defense. They use linebackers and safeties to attack the quarterback. So how does quarterback Brock Purdy navigate that and bounce back from that Cleveland game? Well, it's interesting because Brock has seen a fair amount of blitzing thus far this season, and he's responded really well. It's not been perfect, but he has over two seconds to throw. I believe it's like eight fastest in the NFL, something something in there. I have notes, but I'm just going to go. Let's just pretend it's eighth fast in the NFL, but it, it is it is somewhere in there. So I think it's a place where actually he will respond really well. It's something he's used to. So I don't think that's a big area of concern for San Francisco. And this defense, with no disrespect for them, they're not the Cleveland Browns defense. That was a very talented defense with a defensive coordinator that has always played super tough against Kyle Shanahan everywhere they've been. So they're going to be looking at a very different defense in in Brian Flores' Vikings. But Brian Flores is going to bring everything he has, and the blitzing is a really good point because that's a huge part of what they do. But Brock Purdy has responded very well to it this season. And the 49ers offense last week only had a total of 215 yards, the fewest in a game under head coach Kyle Shanahan. Lindsay, which players are primed for a big game this week in Monday Night Football? Yeah, so I think it's all going to ultimately depend on availability, right? The 49ers are dealing with quite a few injuries. Probably the most they've seen so far in this 2023 season. Christian McCaffrey did not practice on Thursday. Neither did Trent Williams. Neither did Aaron Banks. Looking at this list, neither did Debo Samuel. They are all dealing with some injuries from that Cleveland Browns game. So assuming that there might be maybe a little bit less usage of them if they do play or if they are not available, I think the onus really is on wide receiver Brandon Ayuk and tight end George Kittle to really get this offense fired up. And we've seen it from both of them throughout the course of the season. Most recently, we saw George Kittle score a hat trick against the Dallas Cowboys and Brandon Ayuk has had two touchdowns two two touchdown games this season already. So they are certainly equipped to do it, but it is going to come down to who's available to suit up on Monday night. And I'd love to say something about Ayuk as well. Just the other the other day we saw Brock Purdy and Brandon Ayuk, they were just a little bit off. They weren't totally in sync as we've seen them be throughout the season. But then on that final drive, things started to come together. So if I saw that and you guys saw that, I'm assuming the coaching staff saw that too. So I imagine it's something that they're going to be working on, you know, throughout this week. And I kind of expect them to be right back in sync Monday night. So I totally agree with you, Lindsay. I think we're going to be in for a big brand tonight, you night. Yeah, Tracy, I was curious. Do you have any, do you have your eyes on any other 49ers playmakers that are set up to have a big game and pick that offense back up from last week? 
Well, I, like Lindsay said, a uke and kittle are, are definitely big ones, and it, it is going to come to availability. I actually think this is going to be a big one for Elijah Mitchell because even if Christian McCaffrey is available to play, in Monday's conference call, Kyle Shanahan really indicated that it, Elijah Matt Mitchell is number two because there was asked a lot about Jordan Mason, who's, who's done a really good job. It's just a different kind of back. But this could be a big night for Elijah Mitchell coming in because I don't think we're going to see McCaffrey have as many snaps. Plus, teams seem to be realizing that that's the guy to bring down and the yeah. Friars are going to have to get a, get a little bit more creative there. So I think we could see a, a big night for Elijah Mitchell, which would be awesome to see from him because he's such a great back and he has so much talent when he is available and in there. So if they're going to have to kind of platoon those guys, I think it'll be a good night for him. Both teams are dealing with injuries. The Vikings will be without Justin Jefferson, like mentioned earlier. Lindsay, what's the latest on the 49ers injury updates? Yeah, so I mentioned a little bit of it, but I will go down the list, and it is a <laughs> lengthy one for the 49ers. So linebacker Dre Greenlaw has a hamstring injury. He did not play against the Browns and did not practice on Thursday. Then we have running back Christian McCaffrey dealing with an oblique. He did not practice on Thursday. Wide receiver Debo Samuel dealing with a shoulder injury, did not practice, and he had an early exit against the Browns. Then you've got left tackle Trent Williams dealing with an ankle injury, did not practice Thursday. Same goes for Aaron Banks, also dealing with an ankle injury, no practice, and cornerback Isaiah Oliver was limited with a knee injury. So again, the lengthiest injury list we have seen from the 49ers thus far in 2023. They do have a little bit of time on their side, given that they are on a Monday night schedule. I'm just going to say something about Dre Greenlaw. That was a huge loss for the 49ers on Sundays, and they were not so successful against the run game. Luckily, they're going up against a Vikings team that has not been so successful successful in the run game. But the Dre Greenlaw one is as big to me that's as big an injury to keep an eye on as the guys on offense. Let's talk defense for a bit. The 49ers currently have 10 interceptions, which is the most in the NFL right now. We saw Fred Warner get back-to-back interceptions in games. So Tracy, talk to us about the defense's philosophy about attacking the ball. Well, it's something they talked about all through training camp is getting more turnovers, making those plays. And it's something they've been able to do. And this is a team to do it again. And we've seen them in practice, you know, practicing the peanut peanut punch. That's a hard alliteration right there. (laughs) Practicing the peanut punch. This is the team to do it again against. Because like I said earlier, they've lost nine of their turnovers are fumbles. So this is a team where they can do it. And like I said, the run game is not great. They can, if they can bring pressure to Kirk Cousins, and the O-line is actually an area of strength for, for the Vikings, but if they can bring that pressure to Kirk Cousins, force him into a couple of interceptions. Someone told me earlier that Kirk has a uh, nickname of Kirktober, so we have a Kirktober versus a Brocktober. Brock. But okay. I would be more inclined to go with Brocktober for this one because even though he had an interception the other day, it's his first one since like the 90s. So Yeah, and like Tracy mentioned earlier, we likely might see Elijah Mitchell in the run game more. We saw a lot of Jordan Mason throughout the season. But Lindsay, can you bring the faithful back up to speed on what Elijah Mitchell's seasons have been like throughout his time with the 49ers? What's his season like now? What should they expect from him maybe in this Monday Night Football contest? Yeah, so Elijah Mitchell is an incredibly talented running back. And I think we forget because now we're two seasons removed, but he was the rushing yards leader in 2021. And that was his rookie year. He's got two more years of experience under his belt. Now he has dealt with some unfortunate MCL injuries, which really kind of riddled his 2022 season. But right now he is just coming back from a minor knee injury. He's healthy. He's available. And like Tracy said too, You have the benefit of also having Jordan Mason, who has taken snaps this season and really done very well with his opportunities. He has two touchdowns on the season already. So depending on what happens with CMC and, you know, how they decide to go with him in terms of usage or not use him at all, two very, very capable running backs that are available for the 49ers. All right. And now with our special guests, we like to share some bold predictions for the matchup. So Tracy, kick us off. Do you have any bold predictions for this Monday Night Football contest? Ooh, I love a bold prediction. Okay. (laughs) I am going to make, I'm going to make three. Okay. I say the 49ers have one interception and one forced fumble. Perhaps a forced fumble ran back for a touchdown. Let's just be bold. Let's be crazy. It's prime time. (laughs) Then I'm going to say... Two touchdowns for Ayuk, one for Kittle, and one for Kyle Juszczyk. 
Ooh, that's fun. I like it. I'm liking all these predictions. Lindsay, do you have any bold ones for this Monday Night Football? So I'm going to add on to that, Tracy. I think one, it's a pick six, not just a, not just an interception. They run it all the way back for a touchdown. And then I'm going to go ahead and say a touchdown for each of the running backs, Jordan Mason and Elijah Mitchell, who maybe we'll both see time in this game. I guess we'll see. And actually, uh- one more. This isn't that bold, but if Christian McCaffrey does play – I'm giving him his 16th straight game with a touchdown. Oh, yeah. Actually, let's do that. So let's do a touchdown for each of the running backs because I I have them both, all three of them playing in this game. Let's do it. <laughs> Forget National Tight End Weekend. It's going to be National Running Back Weekend yes, or exactly. Monday. <laughs> I'm do it. I like it. National <laughs> Running Back Monday. Down with it. <laughs> All right, Faithful, tune into the game. The Week 7 matchup is set to kick off at 5.15 p.m. on Monday, October 23rd on ESPN. But that will do it for today. Thank you so much, Lindsay and Tracy, for joining me in this update. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and be sure to turn on the notifications so you're in the know when we post any breaking news updates. And thank you, Faithful, for tuning in.